If you're watching this video, then you may already have a pretty good idea of what Minecraft is. However, just in case you don't, Minecraft is a game that was first announced in mid-November of 2011 and was initially based around a single controllable character in a sandbox environment. This environment, however, almost only consisted of one meter cubed blocks. So, perhaps to some who are not too familiar with the game, it may seem like this game's design almost automatically restricts the player's abilities in what they can and cannot do. Yet since Minecraft's initial release, it has, like any game, gone through some drastic changes and now the possibilities really do seem endless. With the additions of new characters, animals, blocks, enemies and much more, Minecraft in early 2022 definitely feels like a new game. However, what this game has done incredibly well is to stick to its original one by one by one block design without much compromise. Yet that did not stop players from building the most extravagant designs, whilst also simultaneously creating a landscape for millions of people to connect and enjoy playing the game online. Amongst these millions of people are also people who have autism. Autism, I've always known by its umbrella term of ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder is a developmental disability that can manifest itself in varying ways. The signs of autism in children and adults can differ, and it's usually due to the case of context. Nevertheless, the sign of autism that is common between children and adults is the struggle in the department of theory of mind. This concept will be further explained later on in the video, but the real question now is how a game like Minecraft, without any specific goal to directly help those people with autism, has now become a very popular method in helping those exact people. But before we tackle this question at hand, it is important to get a better understanding of what autism spectrum disorder can consist of. According to the World Health Organization, the prevalence of autism is 1 in 160 people, and it is known to be a lifelong condition. But what is important to remember is that ASD is on a spectrum, meaning that the symptoms vary across a continuum in severity and frequency across individuals with ASD. Some may have symptoms severe enough to cause huge difficulties in day-to-day -day life activities, such as encountering a break in routine, or trying to understand what others are thinking or feeling. Whereas others who still have the same disorder may have symptoms that are not as severe and can overcome these difficulties relatively easily. Unfortunately, the root cause of autism is currently not known. Yet, many myths still surround the origin of the disorder. The most well known is along the lines that vaccines given in infancy or early childhood cause autism. That myth is not true, with no credible scientific evidence supporting it. However, with the emergence of powerful brain imaging techniques, researchers have found possible links in brain anatomy and autism. In this research paper titled Neurological Basis of Autism, researchers highlighted abnormalities in the Purkinje cells and the mirror neuron system. The mirror neuron system consists of a set of neurons that are activated by both observed and imitated actions and have a lot to do with theory of mind. As briefly mentioned before, theory of mind acquisition tends to be difficult with people that have autism. Theory of mind spans across a lot of topics but can simply be understood as things we do to understand each other, like for example, inferring how someone is feeling without them explicitly telling you. With all this in mind, it is important to note that ASD currently has no cure nor should it have any cure. This is because of the sheer complexity of ASD and the lack of knowledge surrounding the disorder means that many still see ASD as a disease that should be cured. But instead it should be nourished in society and to be widely accepted. Nevertheless, people with ASD who receive treatment receive it in a way that tries to maximise their ability to function with their symptoms of ASD. Behaviour and communication therapies are amongst the most common types of treatment. However, now a more experimental type of therapy is becoming more popular. A type of therapy where people with ASD no longer have to conform to arbitrary societal standards. Stuart Duncan, who is the father of two children of autism, as well as having autism himself, was tired of seeing people with autism being bullied and trolled online. So he decided to do something about it. He decided to create a Minecraft server, now known as Altcraft, solely for the purpose of accommodating people with autism and their families so that they have a safe and friendly environment to play in. This project was first initiated in early 2013 and has now since become an extremely popular way for people with autism to connect and enjoy the game of Minecraft. In fact, now over 14,000 people have been accepted onto the server, spanning across 150 countries. However, the question still stands, how does Minecraft help these thousands of people with their symptoms of autism? 
Well, the simple answer is, it all comes down to how the server is structured. The Allcraft servers are designed in a way to maximise creativity, whilst also being able to learn the stuff you'd normally come across in a typical therapy setting. An example of this is having a ranking system in which individuals are rewarded for desired behaviours, such as being helpful on the server. This happens on a weekly basis, and these positive behaviours are incentivized by being able to acquire specific cosmetic items that are only accessible to people who win in the rankings. Winning in the rankings is not everything though. Players in Orcraft are free to build anything they want without the fear of it being burnt down by other players. The server has also got features that perhaps are not seen in other Minecraft servers, such as a dedicated area for players where game chat is automatically turned off so that they can relax if they ever get frustrated. Furthermore, the Allcraft servers are also structured to be flexible in order to accommodate the individual needs of every player. I want to give you one example of this one player. He was with us for a little while, but at some point he started spamming dashes in the chat, like a big long line of dashes all the way across the screen. And a little while later, he'd do it again. And so the other players asked him not to do that. He'd say, OK, and then he'd do it again. So it started to frustrate the other players. They, they asked me to mute him or to punish him for breaking the rules, but I knew there had to be something more to it. So I went to his aunt, who's the contact that I have for him, and she explained that he had gone blind in one eye and was losing his vision in the other. So what he was doing was splitting up the chat into easier to see blocks of text, which is pretty smart. So that very same night, I talked to a friend of mine who writes code, and we created a brand new plugin for the server that makes it so that any player on the server, including him, of course, could just enter a command and instantly have every single line separated by dashes. As mentioned before, ASD is a complicated matter, and there's no real one-size-fits-all approach. So, as you guys saw, Stuart and his team do their best to include everyone with ASD onto the server, so that everyone can be treated as fairly as possible. Of course, this is not the whole story, and there may never be a full story when it comes to the wonders of autism. Unfortunately, there is quite a negative stigma for people playing video games as a way of coming to grips with the difficulties that ASD can provide. But it is always important to remember that when it comes to helping someone with any psychological disorder, the main goal should always be to maximise the person's happiness. That is why Orcraft has been such a big success not only as a Minecraft server, but also as a coping mechanism when life gets difficult. It puts the player's thoughts and feelings first, and for that reason it ensures that they always have something to be happy about. And that's how Minecraft helps people with autism. If you stuck to the end of this video, I thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed watching. If you're further interested in Orcraft, autism or both, there will be links down below in the description to research papers and interesting videos about both topics. And finally, if you'd like to donate to the National Autistic Society to help fund the rights and interests of autistic people and their families, then there will also be a link to that down below. Again, I thank you for watching and goodbye.